Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are watching this out there on the World Wide Web. This is Jeremy Geelan for Syscon TV. I'm here at 11th Cloud Expo, second international big data expo, which is why I'm delighted to have Tom Layden with me, now CMO at Ampladata, this company that is on a big data roll. Is that a fair characterization, Tom? Yeah, I think you can say that. It's um, Big data is, is everywhere these days. But uh, the interesting thing is that a lot of com uh, people are saying big data is just the next marketing hype. And as a marketeer, I know all about marketing hypes. So uh, what we've been trying to do at this show is to explain to people that big data is not the next marketing thing after cloud. So first, first of all... So is not. Let's just be quite clear about that. What you're saying is it's not. This is real. This is totally real. So first of all, people were very critical of cloud at the beginning. Uh, even just a few weeks ago, I read an article that cloud was not going to stay forever. Oh, passing fat. Yeah, it was still going to disappear. And then I thought like, okay, so what are we then going to do? I mean, if, if we have to lose all those great applications and great services online. So, so cloud was not a marketing hype. I think most of us smart people now agree on that. The thing with big data is it feeds the cloud. So as a marketing term, it may have become big after cloud, but big, big data has been around for about 10,000 years, I think we can say, and that's what I've been presenting yesterday. We had about 200 people listening to that and they all agreed. Because how we see big data is big data is any data set that is um, too big to easily work with, to easily store or process or analyze. And 10,000 years ago, people, when they wanted to count their cattle, they would use pebbles because they didn't have anything else. And those pebbles, they would keep them in bags. And that was the first concept of storage, right? They would keep their information as pebbles in bags. This, this is good stuff, be honest. Follow along now. So then evolution led us to the invention of scripts. And that was the next big step in big data. We could actually store our information in a different way than with the pebbles, right? So script was the next right, right, big... Like and then we've been progressing towards, uh, well, I'm going to fast forward a bit to the punch card, uh, which was, for example, for the US Census, very important. Uh, the invention of the computer, the database, cloud computing. Then we came to big data analytics and people just thought, okay, big data analytics is just that Hadoop thing. But no, it's all data that is too big to handle. That is how we see it. And data storage is really feeding the cloud because look at all the big successful cloud services. They all either started with storage or had to invest a lot of time in building reliable and scalable storage infrastructures. It's interesting because to me, when I hear you, you know, do the history of it, and in general, when we speak, it seems very curious that you have to be defensive about big data. It wasn't you who made it bigger. It wasn't you who made it growing. And yet it's almost as you have to evangelize around, you know, oh, this is real. But of course it's real. Well, first of all, as you said, I do marketing. Marketing people are always uh, blamed for any hype that may, may go wrong. And you always have people who are very critical of, of, of new concepts that are being hyped in a way. With cloud computing, we saw that very much. I mean, I was one of the first cloud evangelists. We built a cloud platform before anyone had talked about cloud. Uh, and we were very thankful for, for that concept because it was a lot easier for us to explain our business that we're doing. And we're seeing the same thing with, with big data. People are being critical about it, but we try to build a business on it. So in a way, we have to evangelize and tell people what the value is of it and, and why it's so important. Well, let's drill right down then. Ampli data is going to solve my unstructured big data dilemmas. How? Um, we have built a storage, an object storage system that is used for massive amounts of unstructured data. And the secret sauce that we have in there is erasure coding. So what we do not do is copy data. For example, a popular uh, or kind of popular object storage platform today is uh, OpenStack Swift. The problem with, with such solutions is that you're storing several copies of your data. We call that three copies in a cloud. Now, we're not talking about terabytes anymore, we're talking about petabytes. Petabyte is a new terabyte. And <laughs> in, in the old days, if you had, for each gigabyte, you needed a couple of gigabytes to, to store your data reliably, that was not a problem. But a petabyte, 
if you work very densely, that is one rack of storage. So if you're storing three copies, that means that you need three racks for one actual rack. With the technology that we are using, it's called erasure coding, and I'm not going to dig into that right here because I don't think you have 15 minutes for, for this uh, interview. But erasure coding allows you to store your data very efficiently, very reliably, with only 50% overhead, which is a lot less. We only need one and a half rack, plus we are more reliable than those three copies. It's all smart mathematics that we're using. A bunch of PhDs back in the office in Belgium working on very smart software. I like the way that a bunch of PhDs. It's nothing, nothing special. But I mean, it's as far as you're concerned, you are at the leading edge. I know you have some competitors, and I'm sure there's some friction. But has anyone got even close to your approach? Um, probably not. <laughs> Do they believe they have? Uh, yeah, so we have a couple of competitors. Uh, one of them would, for example, be EMC Atmos, but um, I honestly, I haven't heard a lot of good stuff about them. Maybe because it's EMC, I don't know. I haven't tested it. I, I can't say anything about a product. Uh, and then there is a couple of other companies of our size that are in the market. Uh, the thing is, some of them have implemented some sort of erasure coding, uh, but it's what we call Reed Solomon. And uh, Reed Solomon is really a very old version of it. We are using rateless erasure erasure coding, which is giving, giving us a lot of benefits, uh, for example, in, in flexibility, uh, reliability, um, in throughput. We just, oh yeah, that's a very important one. I need to mention this. Howard Marks, a very important storage analyst, he uh, just did an independent test of our system and he was, we just, he was o overwhelmed with the results that we could show him and I'm going to be putting the, uh, the report online very soon. He really saw that the one gigabyte per second throughput that we have with just one controller is a true fact and he saw the scalability if we add more controllers we can really uh, scale out linearly to two three four how how many gigabytes per second uh, you need and there is no other company in the industry uh, that uh, that can offer this today well you talked about online resources so why don't we end with that if i go to amplidata.com because i'm not here i'm not at cloud expo i'm following this along what will i find at amplidata.com well I would recommend you to go to the download section, which is very easy to find on, on the main menu. And in the download section, I'm trying to share as much information with people as possible, papers, technical papers, um, collateral, product collateral. So that's the way, uh, best way to start. You can always find me on Twitter, Tome, which is T-O-M-M-E. And I'll always be happy to come back if you have questions for me. You're up. Personal invitation from the Chief Marketing Officer, no less, of Ampladata. Thank you so much, Tom Layden, for speaking with us here at 11th Cloud Expo, second international big data expo. And thank you for following along on the World Wide Web.